Today, as you can probably see right off, we're going to be talking about batteries. I'm going to discuss the three types of batteries today that most people are using with their solar. When they want to do battery and power storage. One thing I will not be discussing today is the lithium battery. Lithium batteries are very expensive and difficult to charge. My channel, this channel here, is about inexpensive ways to improve your life and be ready in case of power outages and other emergencies. Lithium batteries really do not fit into that category. But I will do a separate video on lithium batteries for solar storage. If anyone would like to, just message me or put it down in the comments, and I'll be very happy to do it. All right, first battery up is the most common type. This is the lead acid battery. It's flooded. It's the most common type you can find out there that's used for battery store for power storage. It's also old technology. You'll have to excuse the noise. There are some people out today using the range. So you'll hear some weapons firing going on. Just ignore it. It's no problem. Isn't going to bother us. Okay, back to it. Lead acid batteries. These, like I said, are flooded. They're the oldest technology, but they still work great. So let's talk about some of these. This first one here is an AutoCraft. It's a deep cycle battery. And you must always get the deep cycle battery, please, on any of these that you do. Do not get a car battery. Car batteries are made for a one big burst of power to start your engines and then a long time to charge up while it's dry while you're driving around so please always use deep cycle marine or rv type batteries okay let's talk first about the cons that's what most people are going to look at first this needs maintenance you have to add distilled water to it if you're using it a lot you should check the water at least once a week. So, as everyone knows, and in case you don't, I'll point it out. This is the access point to the batter, to the water. You simply open it up, pour the water in. Be careful with batteries. Battery acid can burn you. You must be very careful with it. So, you have to check water. You have to add distilled water. And also, these batteries leak. Since they leak, you have to keep them up all the time straight. You can't move them around, tip them over. And like I said, battery acid will burn you and your clothes. Very important to keep that in mind. And most people know this already because they've had car batteries and they know how that works. Here's some more information about this one. Now, this is one I actually use in my 600 watt solar backup system. As you can probably see, this says it was last tested on 315 at the factory. That's about when I bought it. And it's running just fine. It's great. You'll also see, and I want to point this out, cold cranking. A lot of people have put out a lot of videos, and I've seen them, where it says if it says cold cranking, it will not work for solar, because it's made for cranking engines. That may be, but my personal experience is, these deep cycle batteries, say cold cranking or not, work really, really well. These are the workhorses of my all my solar systems right here at the house. So, deep cycle, marine battery flooded. They take a lot of maintenance and they take a lot of work and you have to check them out frequently. But for solar systems, they work great. Let's go to the next one. The next one is going to be the typical AGM battery, absorb glass mat, if anyone's really interested in what it means. Okay. Okay. Also, all AGMs are not the same. You must make sure the AGM says that it is a deep cycle. They make AGMs that are not deep cycle. You want to make sure yours is. All right, so now <clears throat> let's talk about the cons first of AGMs. 
they are expensive. Much more expensive than your standard flooded battery. That's important to remember. That's the biggest con it has is expensive. And by the way, they are extremely heavy to move around. So you'll need to know that. You want to have a way to get it in place and then leave it there if you get one. So let's do some of the common pros. No maintenance will not leak. Also, it's supposed to last longer than the traditional leaded. I don't know if that's true or not, because I haven't had these long enough to compare them with my flooded ones, which this one I've had for, as you can see, several years, and it is still running strong. So I can't say by experience this will last longer, but they say it will. It does charge about five times faster than the flooded ba battery. That's true. And it stands up well in cold and hot temperatures. That's also true. But remember, it will be about twice, if not more, than the cost of a re regular flooded battery. And you can get these regular flooded batteries for about $150 just about anywhere. These are harder to find. They're not really kept on the shelf very much, at least not at this size. This is 12 volt, 100 amp hours, as you can see. And they're just not as easy to come across as these are. So, there you have the AGM. It takes no maintenance. It does not spill. It will not burn you. And it lasts longer, supposed to, and I know it charges faster. Also, it's heavy and extremely expensive. Okay, our last one is the gel, right? This is a gel battery right here I have. It is also 12 volts and 100 amp hours. Okay, it also uh, takes no maintenance. And it does not leak, just like the AGM. It has special gel a special gel agent is added to the electrolytes. That's why it's called the gel, by the way. It will also charge faster than the flooded battery. And they tell me faster than the AGM. But they seem about the same to me. Okay, the cons. Ooh, very expensive. Much more expensive than an AGM battery. And also I have found they are difficult to charge. With an AGM battery, most battery chargers now have a setting for AGM. And, of course, the regular setting for battery chargers for a regular flooded battery. These are a little bit more difficult to charge. Now, some charge controllers are coming out, especially like Renogy, like this one I have here that has gel batteries, specifically for the charging. But they are more difficult to charge, and you should know that. Okay? So, same as the AGM with maintenance. Same as the AGM with no spilling. It is also extremely heavy. And it is supposed to charge faster than the AGM does. And it's supposed to have a larger, longer life cycle. I don't know that for a fact either. But I'll find out because I own one. I only have one. I use it inside the house when I need to run something, more, normally a sensitive electronic, that I need a pure sine wave with because I don't want that sensitive piece of equipment harmed and this lasts the longest and it charges up the best. So that's why I have one, but only one. Really can't afford much more than that. All these batteries, by the way, talking about charging, should not be discharged very low. You'll harm the battery. And these are very expensive, just any type you get. So you want to take care of them, and you want them to last as long as you can. So, once you pick one, read the manual on it, look up whatever you can, treat it the very best, and don't discharge it too far. Shoestring has a rule when it comes to discharging. All right, the rule is never discharge any battery below 12.1 unless it's an emergency. So that's my rule. It's always worked well for me. I hope it will work well for you. Just remember, once you pick your battery type, stay with that type. 
if you're setting up a small solar system and you purchase one of these first, make sure you buy other batteries to go in that same system, just like this one. Same type, this case 27DC2. Make sure they all match together. They'll be much more functional and they'll last longer. They'll discharge and charge together really well. If you're going to get the AGM or if you're going to get the gel, same thing. Get the same type of gel, the same type of batteries and hook them all together and they'll work much more efficiently. So if you'd like to know any more about this information, please put something down in the comments. And if you really want to know something about lithium, of course, then I'll be happy to do one for you. Please subscribe and like and please share to anyone else you think might like this type of video. Shoestring out.